Hello my lovelies, it's Susanna and today I want to show you how to simplify these square roots. Let's take a look at the first example. We want to add 2 times the square root of 7 and 3 times the square root of 7. If we want to add or subtract square roots, we are only allowed to do that if we have the same square root here as we have here. So this is the case. We have twice the square root of 7. And then we can add these. For this, we just take the numbers that are in front of our square roots. So here we have two of them, here we have three of them. So when we add them, we have 2 plus 3 equals 5. And we have five of these green square roots. So we write 5 times the square root of 7 of our green square root. That's it. So you have to have the same square roots, then you are allowed to add or subtract. Let's see what we have here. Now we have a lot more, but here we also want to add and subtract square roots. So we take a look at the same thing. We are only allowed to add the same square roots. So we have the square root of 5 here. Here is the square root of 3. We can't add these two. But here is the square root of 5 again, so we can add these two. Here we have the square root of 3 again, so we take care of this later. First we start with our green square root of 5. How many of these do we have here? We don't see any number here, but then it is just 1 of our green square root, so we have 1 plus 8 of them, which equals 9 of our green square root, so the square root of 5. Then let's take a look at the square root of 3 here. We have it here and we have it here, so this time we want to subtract it because we have the 2 of our orange square root minus 7 of the orange square root, so we Calculate 2 minus 7, which equals negative 5. So we have negative 5 of our orange square roots, and they are called square root of 3. I can make it orange, and this is our result. We are not allowed to subtract these two because there are different colors here, so different square roots we are not allowed to add or subtract. Third example. What's different here? We have a multiplication here now, and here the rules are different. For a multiplication, you are allowed to combine these two separate square roots to one big square root. So you can just take your numbers, the 2, and multiply this by the other number, by the 18, and write it in one big square root awesome rule. It makes things way easier because now we can calculate 2 times 18 which equals 36 and then we calculate the square root of 36. What is it? Well, we have to ask ourselves the 36, which number multiplied by itself equals 36 and this is 6 because 6 times 6 equals 36 and then this 6 is our result for our square root here. Next example. Okay, another multiplication. This time there are more numbers here that are not in our square root. So we have the 3 that is multiplied by this square root. If there is no symbol that you see, there is always a multiplication symbol. The same here, 5 times the square root of 8. And because we have these multiplications here everywhere, we can change the order how we multiply. So we can first just multiply all the numbers, so 3 times 5 first, and then we multiply it by the square root, so the square root of 2, and then multiply it by the square root of 8. Then we have 3 times 5 equals 15, and what about our square roots? Well, we just multiply them by making it a big square root and multiplying the numbers. 2 times 8 we have in our square root then. So if we calculate 
this, we have 2 times 8 equals 16. And then we have to calculate the square root of 16. So we ask ourselves which number multiplied by itself equals 16. And this is 4 times 4. So 4 is the result for our square root here. So we have 15, 15 times 4, which equals 60. And so we have our result for our fourth example. Number 5. Here we have a division of square roots, but the rule is similar to the one with a multiplication. We are allowed to write these two separate square roots as one big square root and just divide the numbers. So we take the 8 and divide it by the 2. So we have the square root of 8 divided by 2 equals 4 and the square root of 4 equals 2 because 2 times 2 equals 4. Another way, if you don't like to write a division like this, you can always write this division as a fraction. So you take the square root of 8 and divide it by the square root of 2 like this, but the rule is the same. You are allowed to write this as one big square root and just divide the numbers. So you take the 8 and divide it by the 2. And then you have the same as we had here. Last example. Okay, a lot of things are going on here. We have 15 times the square root of 12 and 6 times the square root of 27. So we have multiplications here and a division. I would suggest to separate the numbers from the square roots. So we take 15 over 6 first and write it as a separate fraction and then we multiply this by the second fraction that consists of the rest of the square root of 12 here and the square root of 27 in the denominator. Now we can reduce the fraction here so both the 15 and the 6 are divisible by 3, so 15 divided by 3 equals 5, and 6 divided by 3 equals 2, so we have 5 over 2 here. And what about our second fraction here? Well, we have a division of square roots. We are allowed to write it as one big square root and just divide the numbers, so the 12 and divide it by 20. 7. Now we still have the 5 over 2 in front of our square root. The question is, can we calculate the square root now? Well, the square root of 12 hmm, doesn't work. 12 is not a square number and neither is the 27. So first of all, we have to take a look if we can reduce this fraction here. 12 and 27, both numbers are divisible by 3. So 12 divided by 3 equals 4, 27 divided by 3 equals 9. These numbers look much better because the 4 and the 9 are both square numbers. So now we can calculate the square root. The 5 over 2 is still here in front, but the square root of 4 equals 2 now and the square root of 9 equals 3. Now before we multiply, we can take a look if we can uh, cancel things out here and we can because the 2 is here and here, so 1 is left and now we can multiply 5 times 1 equals 5 and 1 times 3 equals 3 and here we got our results. I hope it helped you. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope to see you in one of my next videos. Take care!